Prime Minister Moon Jae-in's trip to the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia and Egypt has served to reaffirm and reinvigorate bilateral ties on several fronts, including defense and green economy. For more on the gains of the recent summit exchanges and the tasks ahead, I have Professor Mohammed Gouda from Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Good Professor afternoon. Gouda, it's a pleasure to have you here. Good afternoon. I also have Professor Oh Jin-sop from Sung Myung Women's University. Professor Oh, welcome back. Uh, thank you for having me. We'll start with you, Professor Gouda. Let's begin then with a few words on the importance of Korea's diplomatic ties with the UAE, Saudi Arabia, as well as Egypt. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, actually, uh, we're talking here about the one, uh, three most important countries in the Middle East. Where, uh, b between Saudi Arabia and UAE, we have 27% of all reserves, world oil reserves. Uh, in Egypt, we have uh, one of the most populated countries in the Arab countries. We have 102 million uh, population. So lots of potential, lots of work. And I think in the last few years, we have lots of deepening ties, the diplomatic and economic ties between Korea and the Middle East and those three countries in particular. And I think more will come, uh, I mean, in the near future, I think, more, more of that. Right, of course, we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. <laughs> Professor, oh, what would you highlight as the gains of this particular presidential trip mm -hmm. to the Arab world? Uh, President Moon returned, uh, returned home last Saturday uh, from Middle East to uh, uh, you know, uh, push for international cooperation. Uh, I could pinpoint uh, three, uh, three keywords. The first is uh, it was a kind of uh, diplomacy. It's not a uh, diplomatic event or uh, just a kind of political gesture. Uh, there is a concrete agenda, something like uh, the clean energy and then the, uh, clean energy and defense and then economy. And the government, the Korean government, pay attention to uh, what the private sector from the G2G level uh, they could, uh, out, of, uh, out of which what uh, the private sectors uh, they need but they cannot. Uh, and then uh, as, as a result that the Korean government uh, take the role uh, of the uh, trailblazer uh, in the new market opportunity in the uh, Middle East area. And second uh, thing we have to remember is it's a forward-looking partnership. Already we have a, a close relationship uh, with uh, Middle East areas, but uh, 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 President Moon uh, announced the importance of the uh, new field of cooperation, uh, something like uh, uh, smart innovation uh, uh, in the area of healthcare and the science and technology and hydrogen and the intellectual property sectors. For the final, uh, and uh, President Moon uh, raised uh, and then suggested a package deal. Uh, it's not a, a, pro, a product or item export or import, but a package the system deal. Uh, they tried the Saudi Arabia. Uh, they set up a vision of uh, vision 2030 uh, as a kind of development plan, uh, which means uh, they try to uh, moving their uh, industrial structure from the oil-centered uh, into the uh, industrial diversification, which means to try to construction of industrial complex. I think about it, uh, when you build uh, the industrial complex, uh, what is needed? Just uh, completing uh, the facilities uh, and then investment of structure, uh, the uh, building is made, uh, is that all? No. Uh, system software and then uh, traffic control system and then even me uh, med medical uh, system uh, and so on are needed. Uh, so uh, in this sense that uh, uh, Korea can uh, give an offer uh, system packages uh, with the uh, uh, infrastructure construction project. Right, it can. And Professor Gouda, what is your assessment of the latest summit exchanges between President Moon and his counterparts over in the Arab world? I think in all honesty, I have to say it was even beyond what I expected. Uh, for a long time, uh, since I've been here in Korea for several years, I've been always thinking about that. I mean, why Korea didn't uh, delve more into the Middle East? I think there is huge potential. And what uh, President Moon have done, I think is, is, it was tremendous. We have the biggest arms deal in the history of Korea, mm -hmm. $3.5 billion. Uh, this is the deal with the UAE. We have a potential, another deal coming with Egypt, with the K-9 Houtsur. Uh, we have potential FTAs, uh, free trade agreements with GCC countries, Global uh, Gulf Cooperation Council and with Egypt. This will be tremendously helpful for the Korean economy. Uh, and I think also the, the local uh, aspect, uh, the public diplomacy aspect here plays a major role. Uh, I have to mention that uh, the, president, the Egyptian president uh, have mentioned Korea explicitly lots of times in his public speeches talking about Korea as a role model for development. So I think this is all good news for the, for, uh, the, the four uh, parts. Here. Right, mm -hmm. it is. As Professor Gouda has mentioned, Professor 
CFO, so Korea signed its largest ever arms export deal with right. the UAE. What, in your view, are the implications of this particular deal between Korea and the UAE? Uh, it might be a remarkable event. The United Arab Emirates signed an agreement uh, to buy Korea's mid-range uh, missile defense system uh, in a deal worth of 3.5 uh, billion U.S. dollars. Uh, the United States uh, is the first uh, foreign buyer of Cheonggung tool, uh, which means that the heavens bow uh, in Korea. And uh, the uh, system's price tag uh, is a uh, U.S. $3.5 billion. Uh, it, it, it makes it that uh, Korea's single largest defense system export deal. So in this sense, uh, I, I must say that uh, it, it, uh, it might be a uh, kind of uh, new pass, uh, 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 pass takers of the uh, new export item. It, it is not steel, it is not shipbuilding, uh, it is a uh, defense system. And second, uh, it is a, a system export. Uh, I mean, the system export means it is not uh, just a selling of goods uh, to the four, uh, foreign parties, uh, but uh, there is a technological uh, transfer and then uh, education system for the operating staffs and so on. Uh, there are a lot of rippling effect. For the finalists, infrastructure investment project. Uh, there is a saying that uh, destruction technology means construction technology. So uh, when you have to equipped with the destruction technology or defense technology, uh, construction uh, technology must be needed. Uh, I mean that in terms of infrastructure uh, construction, uh, there are a lot of chances for uh, the Korea uh, and the uh, G uh, GCC uh, states. Uh, there is a kind of uh, commonalities uh, for the uh, future pr uh, prosperity. Right. And Professor Goda, how do you explain the UAE's decision to perhaps invest in Korea's defense industry? Because Korea has been trying to uh, change its defense industry into an export powerhouse. Well, I have to say, I mean, what's happening with the UAE is also tremendous, as what Professor O have mentioned. Uh, the idea here is that we have a long history of trade, of arms trade between UAE and Korea. But what's happening now is that we have a major deal. And I think this deal uh, sheds light on why UAE is taking uh, or, or buying or and, and delving into this relationship with Korea and not with other uh, parties. And I think this is uh, very important because usually with developed countries and with countries selling arms, we have always this kind of political agenda in the footnotes with usually with in arms deals. But with Korea, I think Korea is a, is a great and strong ally in this respect. We have lots of agreements. We have lots of potential. Uh, and I think also so the relationship has been tremendously helpful when it comes to uh, no strings attached, uh, the political parts and all that. So I think this is why Korea will play a major role, I think also more in the future when it comes to arms trade. Right. And beyond defense, Professor Oh, do you tell us a bit more about the hydrogen mm -hmm. economy, well, the accord on hydrogen economy between mm -hmm. Korea and the Arab world, and what are the implications of cross-border collaboration on that front? Uh, of course, uh, till now, we got the uh, comfortable processes between the uh, two areas. Uh, till now, that uh, Korea and the GCC member states, uh, they have complementary economic structure. Uh, and uh, during the visit, President Moon uh, made a projection of the future cooperation. He stressed a cooperative relationship of uh, smart innovation uh, growth in the area of clean energy, construction, uh, and health care. Out of this, uh, this field of uh, industries, uh, as Sonny commented, that uh, cooperation in hydrogen uh, will be the key. Hydrogen economy is crucial uh, for innovation, uh, and then uh, hydrogen economy uh, is a combination of green uh, hydrogen and blue hydrogen. Uh, first, green hydrogen is a matter of uh, production technology. Uh, so in terms of production, uh, that uh, 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 GCC states, uh, they got a huge potentiality to uh, produce uh, hydrogen. And second one is blue hydrogen. It is a matter of uh, the application and then utilization technology. And then Korea's technology in hydrogen related uh, car industry and then uh, fueling system and, and the you know, fuel cells uh, that the Korea uh, got, a, uh, syner uh, got a, a synergy effect with the uh, GCC members. Uh, in this respect, that by combining the GCC's potential to produce clean hydrogen uh, as much uh, as possible uh, with the Korea's utilization and distribution capacity to uh, 
to uh, apply the hydrogen technology uh, into the real world, uh, then I hope uh, it will be a kind of hydrogen economy will be upgraded in the near future. All right, and staying with such green efforts, Professor Goda, how do you explain the dedication perhaps to carbon neutrality by the UAE, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, which will be hosting the COP27 this year, and their plans to indulge in related efforts with Korea? Thank you, Sunny. And actually, also the COP28 will be hosted by UAE as well. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so this is, of course, a, a major uh, plan for for the, all the three countries. Mm -hmm. And Vision 2013, all three countries have a tremendous emphasis on this aspect. However, the, the reality is not so great, unfortunately. We're looking at the latest report by mm -hmm. UN Environmental Program published last year. It's called uh, the Global Status Report on Renewables. We see that the Middle East have the least renewable is the region with the least amount of renewables consumption and generation uh, if we for instance compare this with korea in, in our mm. case uh, out of 12 targets and policies aimed at uh, delving into green energy and all that korea have already fulfilled 10 uh, policies egypt have fulfilled six saudi arabia uh, uh, four and uae three so there is huge potential for this. The good news is that Korea have made a tremendous impact on UAE when it comes to Al Baraka uh, nuclear energy uh, plant, uh, and with 25% of UAE's electricity consumption of UAE uh, made by this uh, power, power station, uh, $25 billion investment. So uh, people in the Arab world have seen Korea and have seen Korean technology, and, and I think but there is more room for Korea to help Arab countries with this aspect. You're right, mm. which is why Korea and Saudi Arabia have also agreed to explore a project to develop mm. a potentially a cleaner form of energy. How feasible is this plan, do you think, Professor Goodall? I think this is great, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're talking here, I mean, if we look at Saudi Arabia in particular, and this is what President Moon have also mentioned in his uh, speech, talking about Neom, uh, which is the city, uh, the size of the city will be around a quarter of Korea's uh, size. Uh, and with with amount of investment that's amounting to 500 billion dollars of investment there is a clear aim for the leadership in Saudi Arabia for such kind of uh, energy and clean energy and hydrogen and all that and Korea is a, would be a major partner hopefully uh, so I think now with this switch and with this uh, I mean uh, relationship now perhaps this will materialize very soon right professor good staying with Korea's relationship with Saudi Arabia the two countries also have agreed to resume free trade talks between Korea and the Gulf Cooperation Council, as you mentioned, after more than a decade. Could you first tell us a bit about the Gulf Cooperation Council and the its economic potential? Of course. So the Gulf Cooperation Council was uh, established in 1981. We have six uh, Arab countries. We have uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, Qatar, UAE, Bahrain, Oman, uh, and we have uh, around 48.8 uh, billion dollars of, uh, of trade between Korea and those countries. Uh, actually, 84% uh, of Korea's trade with the Middle East comes from those countries. So uh, this is a huge potential. And around 60% of oil, of oil uh, of coming imported by Korea is coming also from those countries. So this is huge and lots of, uh, I mean, uh, relationship, lots of economic relationship. The good news is that if we look at uh, uh, a paper published actually two years ago in the Korean Journal of Middle East Studies talking about a simulation between uh, an, uh, GCC and Korea FTA, we found that in, in, in any case, Korea will, will gain a lot on GDP and welfare. The gains will, be, will amount to at least 1 billion point uh, five to up to 4.8 billion dollars. Uh, so there is lots of momentum, lots of gain from doing this. And the good news is that, again, I'm always emphasizing the mental image. The mental image of Korea is very positive in the Arab countries. And we don't have any like negative aspect like what, what we see with other developed countries. So I think there is a huge uh, potential for more economic trade and more tying, uh, as what Professor O have mentioned, relationship with manufacturing and industry as well. You're right. Mm. And staying with the potential Korea and GCC FTA, Professor, what are some of the gains to be secured under such a deal in your view? Mm -hmm. Uh, as Professor Guda uh, commented about the, the FTA simulation, uh, actually there are many uh, simulation uh, is on the study. Uh, but uh, it is too early to uh, say that uh, what is the uh, evaluation of the FTA uh, with the Korean and the GCC. Uh, but definitely uh, what is certain is uh, uh, almost 68% of crude oil import comes from the GCC states. And then out of total uh, trade volume between Korea 
and the Middle Eastern region, uh, that th uh, three quarters uh, goes to the GCC states. Uh, it's a huge market, and then 75% uh, of uh, uh, export goods uh, goes to uh, the GCC states. In this sense, that uh, uh, FTA uh, means uh, a lot uh, for the, the Korean uh, international trade in the future. And then uh, there is a, a simple example. Uh, making a FTA agreement is like uh, uh, getting a, a kind of membership card in a shopping mall, members only shopping mall. And then think about it, that uh, you, got the, you got a membership card and then it's, it, it is only members can enter into the shopping mall. You can be a customer, but uh, you can be a supplier. Uh, and then uh, you, can be, uh, you can find places uh, uh, become a producer, so even you could support uh, kind of uh, services there. It uh, generates huge chances depending upon your own business creativity. So uh, for this reason uh, that uh, the uh, FTA uh, agreement between uh, the Korea and the GCC state, uh, it uh, gave us a lot of uh, chances uh, in the future and then uh, strengthening the uh, economic tie uh, between uh, two, uh, uh, two states. Right, so it's like a comprehensive VIP mm -hmm. membership mm -hmm. card then. Professor Gouda, staying with free trade initiatives, President Moon and his Egyptian counterpart, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, have laid the groundwork for such efforts between Seoul and Cairo. What are the implications of this advance in trade talks? I think this is also great. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, looking at Egypt, we, we have, uh, there is a huge potential for, Kore for Korean pr products. If we look at Saudi Arabia and UAE, we have high per capita incomes. We have a uh, good opportunity for uh, high-end products, Korean products. In Egypt, we have lots of population, 102 million uh, citizens. Uh, and Egypt also has a tremendous access to Africa. Uh, we're talking here about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement that was uh, established and already ratified last year. Uh, so we have access to 55 countries in Africa uh, with a, a, a total uh, GDP combined together as $3.5 trillion. Uh, so there's, a, there's great potential. Um, also, uh, again, I mean, Egypt, well, from the other side, Egypt depends on Korea a lot when it comes to experts. Uh, suffice to say that 90% of electronic experts of Egypt comes from Samsung and LG mm -hmm. co uh, companies in, in Egypt. So, and there's also, I mean, so the Egyptian side wants to ha establish more technology and more technology transfer with the Korean side. So uh, I think this will be a win-win situation for, for, the, for both sides in, in that case. Right, both for Seoul and Cairo. Professor, what do you propose then to ensure productive ties between Korea and its counterparts in the Arab world in the future? Uh, from the perspective of uh, economic uh, diplomacy, always uh, there are two things to uh, remember is that uh, how to uh, keep going on the sustainability and the balanced uh, uh, transaction between the two parties. Uh, smart innovation uh, might be a good commonality uh, between the two, uh, uh, two countries. Uh, and then uh, more than that, uh, as uh, Professor Kuda commented about uh, nowadays, uh, uh, with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, a uh, trusted value chain, trusted supply chain has a lot of importance. So uh, rather than uh, efficiency, uh, we have to uh, so, uh, we have to create a supply chain based on, on the uh, trust and then the confidence, uh, confidence processes. Right, credibility and mm -hmm. confidence. Right. Professor Gouda, what are your words of advice with regard to guaranteeing continued constructive cooperation between Korea and its counterparts in the Arab world? Uh, I think it depends on the country because we have three different countries and, th of course, three different economies. With UAE, we have the powerhouse of the Middle East and there is, again, huge potential when it comes to arms trading and when it comes to service sector and when it comes to supply chain and uh, sustainability. There's also, I know, there are some efforts going on now with the Korean side. So uh, I think for this aspect, uh, I mean, just, I mean, working together more would be sufficient. With Saudi Arabia, I think uh, it, it would be great if Korea could be involved more in NEOM project. No. Because up to now, and I did my own research some time ago, uh, in, in the Korean media in the last, I would think, five years, it was only mentioned for a few times, the NEOM project and all that. So I think more uh, shedding light on this kind of project will, will be helpful for both sides. And I think Korean companies have tremendous opportunity in that, that aspect. With Egypt, uh, I think Egypt have a different case. Uh, we are passing through. Of course, we have passed through some rough time with the Arab Spring and all that. Now we're gaining momentum. It's, the country is growing economically and all that. 
so what I think, what I suggest, what Korea could do is something similar to what the EU have done with Egypt uh, with regards to something like uh, with, when EU have established a free trade agreement with Egypt, they established something called Industrial Modernization Center. Mm -hmm. In, in Egypt. And I think Korean side can do something similar to that, like I involving the, the Egyptian industry, involving more standardization, more technical capacity, and more, uh, more uh, uh, technology transfer. This would be a tremendously helpful for Egypt as well. Right. So. Professor Gouda, thank you very much for your insights today and your time. Professor, as always, thank you for your thoughts. My pleasure.